peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I always thought that the saying that someone could be afraid of their own shadow was simply just a colloquialism, a, a popular idiom. I never really thought that someone could be truly terrified of seeing their own shadow. That is, until a while back I was going through YouTube and saw a series of videos of children who saw their shadow and discovered it for the very first time. When kids see their shadow, they take a moment and almost every incident is the same. They're a little bit startled at first and then they're very curious about this dark figure that's about their same size, doing everything that they're doing, almost like a new friend that's there to play with them. And they investigate it a little bit, but then once it becomes apparent that this dark companion is not going anywhere, and it does everything that they do, and no matter how hard they try, they can't get rid of it, they become increasingly uncomfortable and afraid. It's the persistence of the shadow and the inability to escape that shadow that eventually scares the child. As I was playing through a bunch of these videos online, there was one video in particular that gave what I think is a really good illustration of even who we are as adults through watching this video. There it is. Look, no, behind you. Behind you. Jason, turn around. Behind you. You don't like that shadow, do you? There you go. It's gone now. Many more like that for you to enjoy if you'd like to look those out. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of days during the week where I feel like that little child. No matter how hard I may run, no matter how high I think I may jump to try and get away from that shadow of a man inside me, I can't. That shadow of the sinful human nature that, that, that is a part of who we are. I love the raw honesty of the Apostle Paul when he talks about this sinful nature, this shadow that is with us in Romans chapter 7. It says, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you grow up from being a kid, you're not supposed to be afraid of your own shadow anymore. But as I think about it, that very well may be a large part of the problem, if not the problem, with our world today. Maybe we should be more afraid of that shadow. A shadow can only exist when something is blocking the light. 
And that physical shadow we see every day is a reminder of a very real spiritual reality in the hearts of all mankind, of that old Adam, that old Eve, that old sinner within us that works very hard to block the light, that resists the things of God, that nature of our heart and mind that is always resisting the true light of God in Christ, darkening life around us. And much like a physical shadow, much like Paul said, we can't rid ourselves of it. In ever more increasing measure, this broken and sinful world and culture we live in celebrates its shadow. Instead of trying to outrun it, it has tried to get rid of it by dressing it up, glorifying it, making it something to aspire to. And you see this everywhere today, especially when it comes to identity, who we think we are, who we try and make ourselves to be, trying to be God's unto ourselves. Scripture says in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. God has sent his pure, holy light into the world. The perfect light and glory of the Son of God, his perfect life, his perfect words, his perfect teachings, and his perfect death and resurrection from the dead is the pure light that reveals our shadow. His light comes to us and shows us who really is inside. And by nature, instead of running into the light further, Jesus tells us our true nature is to run away, to try and cover the light. Jesus tells Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. The only way we can ever hope to disperse our shadow is to get farther away from the earth upon which that shadow is cast and go higher and closer every day to the true light. The farther away you get from earth, from the surface on which your shadow is cast, and the closer to the light you get, the less recognizable that shadow becomes. To get so close to the light that we cease to see our own form, that we cease to be in our own minds, that we're totally and completely overcome by the light of God in Christ. This is what Jesus means when he says in our text in today from Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now you have to understand something very important about this passage. When Jesus says, shine your light, he's not contradicting himself. We don't have a light in and of ourselves to shine. How is it that Jesus could say to a bunch of sinful disciples that they were the light of the world? How can he say to a bunch of sinners like you and me that you are the light of the world? Because it's not your light. It's not my light. If Jesus was talking about our light as if we could switch it on and off and it's in our power to light up a darkened world, then he would have said, let people see your light and your good works so they glorify you. But that's not what he says. He says, let my light shine. The light I'm giving you simply by speaking to you and putting it in your heart. Let that light, the light of Easter morning, 
the light of your redemption, let that shine so people see it and glorify him, your Father in heaven. In the video of the little boy that we watched, you'll notice that when he first came into the light and saw his shadow, he, he got scared of what he saw. Kind of like God's word, his light, his law that reveals our sin. And then he tried to run away from it, and almost inadvertently, he runs into the shadow of a building or a tree or whatever that was, and, oh, it's gone. He gets really excited. Peace, no longer fearful. It's a powerful illustration of the salvation we have in Christ. John says that God is light, and his light is pure, and it's holy. And when it shines on us, that's what it does to us. It shows us that shadow, and it should terrify us. We know what's inside, and we should be afraid of it. We should come running into the shadow, as Scripture says, of his wing. Time and time again throughout the Old Testament, this is the imagery that God gives us, the foretelling of this salvation that would come, that there would be someone coming to cover us from that light. If you look at Psalm 36, verse 7, how precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. In Psalm 63, 7, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. What's our only hope of surviving the pure, holy, righteous light of a holy God that has come to us? Well, God has wrapped that light in flesh. And when he put his son on the cross, his death was a covering for us, a forgiving of our sins. It's only in Christ that we can stand in the pure, holy light of God, both now and for eternity. Faith in Christ's light. In Jesus' day, and at the time of the New Testament being written, the Greek culture thought that you saw with your eyes literally because you had light in them, like a projector. And that's how you saw things. Now, of course, we know that's not true now. But I think it's very interesting that Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, was himself a Greek from Macedonia, a Gentile. And Luke, in his account that he gives of this teaching of Jesus about being the light of the world, he has a detail that Matthew doesn't have that is, pun intended, illuminating for us. Here's Luke chapter 11, verse 33. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. Jesus' teaching is saying that when you look to him with the eyes of faith and believe in him, his light his life, not your own, then that is how you know you have the light. If we look with faith to Christ and we know that he is the light of the world, that is only because his light has first come to us and dispelled the darkness in our own heart. That his light has come to give us light. Look at Psalm 18, 28. For it is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, must come, I'm sorry, for it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. As sinful people by nature, if we are to have a saving faith at all, that faith must be revealed to us, come to us, and be put in our darkened hearts. And that is the good news of Jesus. That through his word, that is how he does cast light into our life. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
And that is the context with which Jesus says, you are the light of the world because I have put my light in your heart. Therefore, walk in the light. I have made you children of the light. No, don't walk in darkness anymore. I have freed you from that. Be careful to walk in the light. And it's only as we walk ever closer with the light and towards the light of Christ that we'll find the shadows of our past to be dispelled and the darkness of the world around us to be dispersed. Only as we walk by faith in Christ will every day we're privileged to have in this life be a day that can be filled with the hope of the light of eternity. And walking by faith means nothing else than that you believe what God says. You believe what he says about you, and you believe what he says he's done for you. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus' light has not been overcome. Sin, death, and the devil have not defeated it. And if we desire to experience the fullness of that life he has won for us, then we must walk ever closer with him and towards him into the light. His light must shine in and through us, and that can only happen when we ourselves die to ourselves. When we get so close to the light that who we are is lost in him. Our desires are his Our wants are his. Our thoughts are his. Our identity is in him. This is the warning of scripture all the time that it gives us. For example, in Ephesians 5, sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you because you are children of light and among the saints. Let there be no filthiness or no foolish talk nor crude joking which are out of place But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light, For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. We can walk in the light. We don't have to walk in the shadows. We can live in the light of Christ because he has put that light in our hearts. Being the light of the world means to proclaim that truth of everything that Christ has done for us. Yes, as we live the rest of this life, that old shadow of ours will persistently cling to us. But Jesus says that through a life of faithfulness, repentance, discipleship, drawing ever closer to him each and every day, not only will we prevail over the darkness, but it's because Christ has already prevailed over the darkness. By God's great mercy through faith in Jesus We will bask in the presence of God forever, in eternity. As it says in Revelation 22, verse 5, There will be no more night, for we will not need the light of a lamp or the light of a sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever, even starting today. Amen.